Frostbite Theater presents Cold Cuts, No Baloney. Just science. We took the pewter inside the cups, froze it rock hard. Hard things rain better than soft things do. That's why your pillow doesn't rain when you smack your head against it at night. The bells also signal the end of what we're going to do with the nitrogen, but it's not the end of our time here. It just means I can take a little bit of the extra and I can put some in my lemonade and I can take off the goggles and gloves and then I can ask you states of matter. How many? Three. Actually, four main ones. You have solid, liquid, gas, plasma. Good. Solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. And I don't want to say plasma is the weird one. Uh, it's actually the most common state of matter we see in the universe. Uh, what a plasma is, though, it's what you get if you take a gas and you heat it up. Right? So if I take a gas, I make it get hotter, the particles move faster. Eventually, I can get it hot enough that the particles move quickly enough that when they smack into each other, electrons get knocked off. And so that's what's happening inside a plasma. I have electrons that have been knocked off their atoms, atoms that need electrons, and they can recombine. And if they do, the electrons need to give up some energy, and that can come off in the form of light that we can see. On Earth, you have plasma. The spark between the domes was a plasma. Lightning is a plasma. But the problem that plasmas have on Earth is it's just too cold. It's too cold for them to stay as plasmas on their own for very long. Not true in the bulk of the universe. The bulk of the universe we actually see with our eyes is in the form of a plasma. The sun is a plasma. All the stars out there are plasmas. There's a lot of plasma out there. And it's not that hard to make a plasma. This kind of light bulb, fluorescent light bulb, when it runs, there's a plasma on the inside. Uh, neon signs they use for advertising your plasma. And we're going to make some plasmas here. What I have are four different samples of elements. I have nitrogen, helium, mercury, and neon. I'm going to change them to a plasma by heating them up using this thing. This is called a Tesla coil. And when I turn it on, it gives off radio waves, which we don't see. If I turn on my little radio here, we can detect. Whoops. Right, it's not the most exciting channel ever, but it is there. Better than a few of them, too. And we can make little baby lightning as well. So what we're going to do we're going to turn off the lights, and with the lights off, we'll light up the plasmas. Tell me the colors. Okay? Lights are going out. Fluorescent bulb is going on. What color? White. Pretty much white. The nitrogen? Purple. Pretty much purple. The helium? Purple. The mercury? Purple. And the neon. Well, can we turn off that uh, flash, please? Yeah. Red. Good. Lights back on, please. Good. So helium. The element helium was actually found on the sun before it was found on the Earth. And it was found on the sun by studying light. Look at the lights above us. They're more or less white. Uh, they're more or less white because they more or less have all the colors mixed together. Have you ever seen a rainbow? Yes. Where do the colors come from? Yeah, it's, in the, it's in the light already. right? The reason why you don't see rainbows all the time is if your eye actually gets hit by more than one color on the same spot, those colors get blended together for you. And one way that your brain says, OK, fine, I'm going to call that white, every single color hits the same spot. What happens with the rainbow, the light goes through the raindrop, and then the light bends. And it turns out different colors bend by different amounts. So when you look at it, the colors are spread out for you. And the red hits one part of your eye, the violet hits a different part, all the other colors are in between, and you can see the colors because they're not getting blended together in your eye anymore. Put them all together again, your brain's going to call it white. And there are other ways that your brain calls things white also. How many of you have ever looked at a TV set or a computer screen? Three colors. They only show you three. Which three? Red. Red. red blue. Red, blue. Yellow. Green. RGB. Red, green, blue. And by adjusting how bright the red, green, and blue are, your brain says, oh, that's white. Or, oh, that's yellow. Oh, that's orange. That's whatever. One of these fooled you. One of these four. Everyone told me the same color. That color's not there. It's different colors blending together, and your brain is calling it something else. Now, scientists don't call rainbows rainbows. They call it the visible spectrum. And it turns out if you study a plasma spectrum, you can actually tell which elements are in there because of how we're making the light. What we're doing with this, we're reaching in with the radio waves, we're grabbing electrons, and then we're pulling them away from the nucleus. Then we let them go. When we let them go, they fall back in towards the nucleus. But electrons in atoms don't fall like regular things fall. Or it's more like you trip and fall down the stairs. And they just sort of go boom, boom, boom down these different levels. Electrons in atoms have to be in certain levels, certain shells. 
And when they fall, they have to go from one shell to another shell to another shell. And again, it's kind of like tripping and falling down the stairs. And if the shells are far apart, that's a lot of energy, you get purple. If the shells are close together, that's a little bit of energy and it gets red. The thing, though, is the way the shells are arranged depends on how many protons are in the nucleus. And if I change how many protons in the nucleus, what have I also changed? The element. The element. Yeah. So it really depends. You can use this like a fingerprint based on light to figure out what the element is, because it's going to be different for every element, which is great if you can see the rainbows. That's what these things are for. Okay, these are called rainbow glasses or diffraction glasses. You put them on your face, look at the source of light, spreads it out for you so you can see the colors that make up that light. You'll get a pair of these to keep if you promise. Say, I promise not to look at the sun. Say, seriously, I promise not to look at the sun. <laughs> Why don't you want to look at the sun? Yeah, it'll burn your eye. Have you ever played with a magnifying glass in sunlight? No. And you can burn stuff with it? Well, your eye works the same way. You have a lens in your eye, just like the magnifying glass. If you go staring at the sun, it's going to focus the light on the back of your eye, keep it there for too long, you're going to burn that part of your eye. And you don't feel it happening. You don't have nerves in your eye that sense pain. So you can burn your eye and not even know what's going on. Part of the problem with these glasses, they don't protect you from anything. They just make the world pretty. So don't put these on your face and go, oh, oh, it's so oh, bright, because you're going to fry your eye. Okay, there are ways to cheat. If you must know what the sun's pattern looks like, there are ways to cheat. The easiest way to cheat, take your glasses off, shine the sunlight through them, you can project the rainbow on the ground. Another easy way to cheat is if you have a cell phone with a camera, put this over the camera lens, point that at the sun, take a photo. Now, you might burn out the camera. I don't guarantee that you won't. But if my only choices are I have to use my eye or I have to use the camera, pick the camera. Because if you toast the camera, it's annoying, but they make them. You can get another one. If you fry your eye, that's going to be stuck there forever. Okay? Another easy way to cheat is at night. How do we see sunlight at night? The moon. The moon, the moon right now is a little bit past full, so wait a bit after sunset. It'll come up in the, in the sky. Uh, other things that are fun at night are street lights that make different kinds. You can tell they're different because they give you different patterns. Car headlights are fun. But don't stand in the middle of the street in the middle of the night with these glasses on going, oh, car, because <laughs> you're going to get run over. Okay, so again, these do not protect you from anything. If your kid's sister beats you up every day when you get home, she will beat you up if you're wearing these. She's just going to look better doing it. She's on these little rainbow fists of fury as she comes at you, but they won't protect you from her. They won't protect you from a truck. They won't protect you from the sun. Okay, so use your brains when you use these glasses. If we could have some of the teachers, adults, chaperones, help us pass these things around, please. A few minutes later. First thing we'd like you to do, take your glasses, pop them on your face, look up. So now, now we can see the colors and the lights above us. And what we're going to do, we're going to relight our plasmas in the dark. If you are ready. Lights are going out. Fluorescent bulb is going on. So this one, pretty decent full spectrum light. It is missing a little bit between uh, green and yellow, but it has a lot of the colors. If you have fluorescent lights at home, you may notice that they give off a different pattern. They do make different kinds of fluorescent lights. So you can't get different patterns uh, with different fluorescent lights. Nitrogen. Look for missing colors. Look in between red and orange. There's a little dark line. That color's gone. In between green and yellow, there's a thicker dark line. And the blues are gone. Missing blue. Part of the reason why it doesn't look white when we mix it up. It's missing some of the colors. Helium is different. Helium basically just has four colors. Right? There's a red, there's kind of a yellowish orange, there's a bluish green, there's a purple. Not the same situation we have with nitrogen. Right? Nitrogen has most of the colors, missing a few. Helium only has a handful of colors. It's missing everything else. Mercury. Mercury is kind of the same deal that we have with helium, and just that there are a few colors. 
And if I call them out, it's almost what I said for helium. There's a faint red, there's an orange, there's a green, there's a purple. But they're not the same. Right? The spacings are different, which means the colors are different. The brightnesses are different. Those are two different patterns there. And again, way different than nitrogen. And then, finally, neon. Lots of red, orange, yellow, a little bit of green. But not every red, orange, and yellow. You have gaps inside there as well. So this is how astronomers know what star is made of. You don't need the star, you just need the light. And by studying the patterns in the light, you can figure out which elements are in the star. So of the four, the nitrogen, the helium, the mercury, the neon, which one fooled us? Mercury, very good, mercury. That blue light does not contain blue. It's made from purple, green, orange, red. Your brain mixes it up and says blue, which is super cute of you brain, but there's no blue in that light. Speaking of lights, light space. <laughs> now, one more super quick thing. What is this? My laser pointer. With the lights out and your glasses on, I'm going to shine the laser on the wall. You tell me the colors in the laser light. What colors? Green. And? Green. Just green. Right, lasers are pretty much just one color of light. If I try to take a single color, break into a rainbow, I don't get a rainbow because I only have the one color to play with. It's like if I give you a green crayon and I say, here's a green crayon, draw a rainbow. You're going to go, here's green because that's all you have. But it's fairly useful that it is just one color. Uh, so, unfortunately, that is about the time that we have. Before we head out, a couple of things. Uh, first, if you would like a copy of the Table of Elements, you may grab a copy of the Table of Elements. <laughs> Second, if you want to see other things, we have a bunch of videos up on YouTube. Some of the things you've seen, a lot of the stuff you haven't. So if you want to see liquid nitrogen in the microwave, if you want to see freezing liquid nitrogen, if you want to see giant koosh ball in liquid nitrogen, go to YouTube, search for Jefferson Lab, or grab one of these things.